it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so glad that you're joining me tonight. This is take two because take one, we're having some camera issues. And so hopefully this one's going to work out just fine and we won't need a take three. You know, it's a bad day when you need three takes to start a Facebook Live video. Thursday Night Stamp Therapy is filmed live on Facebook. Facebook, but I do put it on YouTube. So I know some of you are watching me over there. So um, leave a comment and let me know if you're, if you watch on Facebook or if you catch all my videos on YouTube, um, whichever one you're not on, you definitely want to check out because over on YouTube, I'm about to hit 20,000 subscribers, which I'm so excited about. And so if you're not a subscriber yet, I hope that you'll consider hitting the subscribe button and helping me reach that goal of 20,000. I'm so excited. And Thomas thinks we need to do a big giveaway for reaching that huge milestone. So you don't want to miss it. <laughs> Definitely make sure to um, check out our YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the video description if you haven't already seen it. <laughs> and if you don't follow us on Facebook, I always am posting photos over there and sharing other fun posts. So if you're watching mostly on YouTube, you definitely want to come and hang out with us on Facebook as well. So look in the video description for both of those links to YouTube and to Facebook. Also my blog and my shopping website and all that stuff is all in the video description as well. Um, oh good, I think we are good. You guys are saying that it looks so much better. Thank you so much. And thank you, Susan, for sharing. <laughs> I'm so excited you guys are here with me tonight. So I, I've been a demonstrator for almost 20 years. I live in Illinois, which is right in the middle of the United States. Um, I'd love to hear where you're from. Some of you sometimes comment and uh, tell me Tell me where you're tuning in from. So I would love for you to, to let me know where you're from. Oh, and what we were asking last time was, how are you watching? Do you watch on your phone? Do you watch on your computer? Do you watch on your iPad? Do you put me up on the TV? Maybe the whole family watches with you or you're just watching by yourself. Um, I think it would kind of be funny if the whole family watched. <laughs> it's time for the Julie show. <laughs> All those stamping sometimes is a whole family activity for me. Okay, well, listen, you guys, I neglected the last like three weeks to do mail call. And so we have a little bit to catch up on. So we're going to start right now because if I don't start with it, then I'm going to forget. And that would be terrible. <laughs> so I think the first bit of cards are duplicates from the great big card swap okay so if you're not familiar with the great big card swap we do it every month and um the theme last month was valentine so i've got some valentines to share with you and the theme this month is flowers and the theme next month is um animals and so joe williams sent in this card for the march swap and she sent an extra for me so i'm sharing it early um isn't this cute with the otters oh my goodness the awesome otters and the marble designer paper are both free gift options during celebration. And because the March swaps won't be shared until after celebration is over, I wanted to share this cute little card right now. Do you guys have the otters? They're so cute. I love how she used the layering diorama dies to add the layers here, including the one here with the, um, with the sentiment. Now, I believe that the layering diorama dies are currently not available to order. So um, keep checking. I think they're supposed to be in around the end of February. Um, so just a few more weeks, hopefully. Anyway, awesome card from Joe. I'm so excited. Thank you, Joe, for sending me an extra one. And um, definitely send in your cute little animal cards for the March great big card swap. Let me flash this up here really quick. The great big card swap. So we're limiting in March, starting in March, to just one card per month. And you can send your cards to Julie Davison, P.O. Box 6164, Champaign, Illinois 61826. Just make sure to include a return postage stamp. Envelopes are provided. And um, yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, so these are all extra cards. So some of these, well, all of the rest of them I have shared already. So I'll go through them kind of quickly. This one was an extra from April Booth using the new Heart and Home Suite. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. So beautiful. This one was from Joan Talent using, um, oh, I forgot the name of this stamp set from Celebration a few years ago. So beautiful. The theme again in February is flowers. Here's another one from Joe Williams with the double Z fold. This uses the Daffodil Daydream Afternoon, sorry, Daffodil Afternoon Designer Paper. Oh my gosh, this was so awesome. This one was from Anna Rabadou and she did two 
cards. I only have the one over here. The other one's in the swap box. Um, but she stamped in black and then she did a watercolor and then she die cut them and swapped the circles. So there's two cards that are like the opposite. It's so cool. Uh, this next card is from Kimberly Barbish using the um, Bouquet of Love embossing folder with some really pretty Blushing Bride foil cardstock. Here's another one from Kimberly that uses the suit and tie dies. Look at those suspenders. Oh my goodness. The um, In Good Taste designer paper along with some Highland Heather and some Sweet Talk. Um, from the mini catalog. Here's another one from Kimberly Barbish, a little gatefold card with the cute koalas. And next card is from Linda Vanderspool. This is a book binding card with all the pages. I love that. April did a card like this recently and shared it with our team and I never thought to add pages to a book binding card. That's so smart. Such a lovely card. Thank you guys so much for sending extras for me. Here's another one for Linda. Oh my gosh, I love this one. Oh, I was going to say, I don't remember this one being in the card swap. This was actually not an extra, but just a card that she sent me, I think maybe with some stamps. Um, yes, <laughs> oh, but I love how it matched and it totally went with the theme. Uh, here's some more. These are from the Valentine swap from last month. Duplicates from Jade. Oh, Jade, what's your last name? Chu, I think. Um, I don't know why I didn't write it on there. Karen Fletcher sent this anniversary card. Love that with the black and white paper. This one is from Linda Vanderspool. I love this um, delicate heart border. That is so pretty. This one is from Carol Alanis. Little double flap card. We have some envelopes. Those are so cute from the banner year. And then the sweet talk designer paper. And last duplicate from the swap is from Jeannie Hurst. Thank you guys so much for sending me extras with your swap cards. It is such a joy to do the great big card swap and to share all of your cards. And so when you send extras, it just like, oh, it just makes that joy even bigger for me. Thank you so, so much. All right. Next up, I have a few cards that I received in the mail from friends. This one from Janet Casto. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> I love this card, Janet. It just arrived today. So I was so excited to be able to share it. Janet always includes some... <laughs> confetti and this is that um floating pop-up card i'll make sure to put the link in the video description when we're all done so you guys can check this out essentially it's just two card fronts that have a little lip here and then the floating elements on the um uh window sheets i don't know why i couldn't think of the word so cute i love this with that flower sweet talk paper thank you not flower heart <laughs> sweet talk paper oh there's a little spray stray piece this one is from eve springer and i love this gold laser cut oh my gosh this looks so elegant with the navy so this card is really simple we have the um i mean it's not simple because it's beautiful i just mean the um the idea of it is a full card Card, but then the front is cut in half and then turned to the side. So we have a little designer paper to offset it here, but this, this navy piece is just the other half of the card front. Isn't it just gorgeous? Sometimes you don't even need to do that much to a card and it just looks amazing. So thank you so much, Eve, for this awesome card and your note inside. It just totally made my day. Here's one from Winnie Anchorbrent using a paper pumpkin kit with some of the, um, the stamped images as well as the little enamel shapes and ribbon. Winnie, thank you so much. I'm sorry that I... Um, I'm sorry about the kit mix up, but I hope that you enjoyed what I sent and I'll have opportunities to to participate again soon. Here is a one from Nadine Kunha who sent this one with a sailing home stamp set. Love the wave embossed background and the die cuts. Oh, I just love lighthouses. Next up is a card from Karen Key. Karen, this is so thoughtful. Last month, right after Christmas, I had a, a Thursday night stamp therapy Facebook Live where I just wasn't feeling well. Like, I just wasn't myself. And I listened to it like a week or two later, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I really sound kind of terrible. And Karen sent a get well card. Thank you so much. It really made my day to get this in the mail. I love this sunshine and rainbows designer paper and the cloud punch with the vellum is just the cutest. Now, if you haven't gotten the cloud punch yet, I was looking at the online store today and it is low inventory. I don't know when it's gonna be back in stock. So if you haven't ordered it and you want it, order it now, don't wait it may be a month or two before we get it again all right the next bit of oh 
<laughs> there's all that confetti from Janet's card. Um, the next bunch of cards is from my team. We did a one for one card swap. So we exchanged names and then we sent cards directly to the other people. So I participated and I sent a card to everybody and I got a card back from everybody. So I'm going to share those cards next. This one is from Ruth Moore using the Friendly Hello Celebration Bundle. It's a little easel card. So it has this piece, this flap in the front and um, oh, I was trying to show it to you here. So this front part um, you can see the blue piece was scored in half and then folded backwards. And then the black is a panel that goes all the way down. So then it folds up and it sticks on this piece, which is on Stampin' Dimensionals. Isn't that clever? I love the colors on this card. We have another fun fold card. This one is from Pam Denunzio, and she has the measurements here. So I'll pause so that you can check that out. The double fold pop-up, not sure about the name. She said, but there's the measurements. And this, isn't that fun? I think I made a card like this. Uh, I just think it's so fun to have like this extended accordion and then the smaller card on top of it. So the smaller card's like three inches by six folded in half, so like a three by three card. And then we've got that cute little otter again, the awesome otters and the um, Simply Marvelous designer paper. Both of those are celebration gift options. Oh my gosh, so fun. Oh, next card is from Joe Williams. I love the way she did the designer paper. So she cut in from the center and then folded up and folded down and did some detailed die cuts with the daffodils. Mm, I have to show you a sneak peek of the projects that we're going to be making later this month. This card is from Jennifer McLaughlin and she used the bouquet of love embossing folder. I love that. Happy wedding day. Next up is a card from Carmen Melendez, and she cased this one from the catalog. I love this Cactus Cuties. I actually got it out thinking I might use it tonight, but I don't think I will. I love this, like, layering, and I just have to, like, play around with it and feel more comfortable to, to layer up the cactus like that. So cute. Love all the colors on there, too. Oh, look at this one. This one's from April Booth using the Hedgehog Horizon designer paper. Um, such an awesome combination here. April, thank you so much. I'm so happy to get a card with the hedgehogs because I still i am holding out. I still haven't gotten that bundle yet. <laughs> Here's one from Anna Masternak using the Symbols of Fortune. Um, so pretty with a gold detailed die cut here. Oh my gosh, I just love that with the ginkgo leaves. Wishing a lifetime of happiness and a world of love. Well, next card is from Amanda Hincamper. We have a card layout that we do, a card layout challenge every other week in my team group. And so this was the layout that we did one week as a challenge. And so Amanda did this card with the Sweet Talk designer paper. And she said she used this card design for her upcoming class. I thought that was so much fun. Last card is from my mama, Susan LaCroix. She did a sidestep card using the new flowering fields and the detailed windmill die cut. Isn't that cool? Oh my goodness. I shared a card recently on Facebook that had this, and I'll link in the video description to this as well, so you can check out the sidestep measurements and tutorial. It's really, really easy. It's just a piece that kind of folds over the top here. I love the colors on this one. Fresh freesia and rich razzleberry. So beautiful with the shaded spruce. I was so excited to get mom's card. I love it. Okay, so that's the mail call. Oh, I have one more. Um, one more card. This was another duplicate. This one was from Kimberly Barbish, and I saved it for the end because I am going to, we're going to attempt to make it tonight. <laughs> All right, so this one's from Kimberly, and she has a gatefold card, and then look at it pops up and opens like that. How fun is that with a double little pop-up? Well, I thought that we would use or we would remake this card using the Turtle Friends stamp set. And I thought that would be a really fun thing to pair with the Sunshine and Rainbows designer paper. This is one of the celebration gift options. And I just love the bright colors in this paper. I remembered that one of the the pieces is this granny apple green, which kind of reminded me of the turtles. So I turned to this one. I thought we would do a fun, bright colored card with turtle and friends. And I do have some pieces that are, um, that are 
kind of cut and ready to go. So I haven't made this card yet. So <laughs> hopefully it turns out uh, like I've got sort of planned. <laughs> okay, we're going to start by stamping the turtle. This stamp set, the Turtle Friends, has a coordinating punch, which whenever you get a stamp set with a coordinating punch, um, you save 10%. So uh, the stamp set bundles and the stamp and die bundles, 10% always on those. That's really exciting. So we're going to do the outline of the turtle, and then we're going to stamp the shell with Granny Apple Green. I love our photopolymer stamps because you can see right through them and stamp right where you need to be. Now, this kind of looked like a really pale turtle to me. And so I decided to add a little bit of color. So I'm using the light granny apple green stamp and blend to color in the rest of the turtle um, <laughs> so that he doesn't look like he's going to die because he's so pale. So let's just do, let me actually switch over to the other tip. I feel like I have a little bit more control, but the color is different. Well, I'll make it work. <laughs> to be very careful so I don't go out of my lines. Okay, I think he looks a lot better in color. And I'm okay with his shell being white and then having the, the green. So this is that part I missed earlier. Okay, so then we're going to use the coordinating punch to punch out the turtle. This will be for the front of our card. All right, so I've got some pieces here. I tried to mark the measurements and I'll also include them in the video description for you. Um, I just saw from Alita's, uh, Alita's comment. You had a turtle named Bobo growing up. That's exciting. Have you, has anybody else ever had a pet turtle? My siblings actually had uh, a couple turtles growing up and um, I was, I feel like I was in high school. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, to the turtles. I certainly never played with them <laughs> at all. Uh, okay, so we're starting with a card base that's five and a half by eight and a half inches, and we're going to score at two and an eighth and six and three eighths. So this is a standard um, gatefold card, and um, I always score because I just score all the time, but mom's little trick, which I'm just now remembering now that I've scored it, <laughs> mom's little trick is to only score the first one at two and an eighth, and then match up the other end and use your bone fold folder to crease it so that you make sure that they meet in the middle. Now my scoring did okay so I think we're we got lucky. <laughs> uh, now the next piece is two pieces of designer paper. I'm using that sunshine and rainbow paper and both pieces are one and seven eighths inch by five and a quarter. And so we're going to put these on the front flaps of that card base. All right, I love the colors in this paper. And even though I was focusing on the green paper because the turtle is green, I love um, patterns like this that have all kinds of colors in them. So for the other pieces on the card, I just kind of pulled in some of those other colors. So I've got the granny apple green. I decided to pull in the mango melody. Our turtle's gonna go on here. And then I already stamped the sentiment, so I won't show you that again, but I just used some Coastal Cabana, which is another color in the paper as well. So if you're ever trying to figure out what colors to put together, then I always say turn to the design, turn to the design. I feel like I need to just touch up the turtle's face a little bit because I feel like there's some weird Weird coloring. I guess I gotta do the neck as well. <sighs> and the feet. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes when you go back, it shows up and you gotta redo it. Anyway, that's okay. There we go. He's a little darker now. Okay, so we're gonna do some layering on here. And I have to say, I really love how... 
Um, on Kimberly's card, this piece kind of tucks underneath and holds the card closed. And so I was thinking if we had um, maybe this part attached to the side and this part attached to here that we could have a similar kind of closure. So um, that is the plan. Although I'm wondering if this needs to be, maybe we need a little bit more stability. I'm looking for a piece of cardstock. Hold on. Okay. By the way, my cardstock or my designer paper is one and a half by three inches. Actually, look at that layer so nicely. Let's just cut. Let's just cut a little piece of cardstock. So this is going to be one and three quarter inches by three and a quarter. And this way, I feel like there's a little something more stable to tuck. I'm worried that the paper will be too flimsy on its own. Okay, so this is going to go on the card and because our card is gonna have this opening, I'm gonna use some tear and tape, which is just more heavy duty than the regular seal adhesive. So we'll use some tear and tape only on half. And I want to, that looks about right. Okay, next up is our circle. And this is gonna go on with some Stampin' Dimensionals. I guess all I, all I have is this corner because, um, oops, wrong corner. Okay. Doot, doot, doot. This corner. Oh. <laughs> Once these Stampin' Dimensional backings come off, then it's like it can't be, it can't be put down without losing its permanent stickiness. Okay, let's see how this works. Hey, not bad. Sort of like this interlocking bit. Okay, so then the turtle is also going to go on with some dimensionals onto the label. And I'll do one more under the head. Cute. And then this one is mostly going to be on the shell. So I'm just going to use some regular adhesive and maybe a little dimensional under the very end for the bit that hangs off. Okay, so we've got our front done and we have this latch. <laughs> like, I feel like it's all fancy, but it's not really that fancy, but it does keep the card closed. Okay, so for the inside, we have some pieces. First of all, we have the main piece for the inside. This is just the regular four inch by five and a quarter. So the regular quarter sheet of cardstock. And um, on this, Let's take a look at Kimberly's card. So um, maybe we'll have room for a sentiment on the side, um, but not a lot of room. So I'm just gonna put this down. I did pull out um, the sentiment that says, you are turtly loved. <laughs> I don't think you could see it very well. You are turtly loved. Oh, it's so stinking cute. If we need to, then we can stamp like part and part. So let's see how much room we have before we stamp our sentiment. Now we have two pop-up pieces. The smaller one is for the top and it's gonna have a smaller square. Um, and so this one is three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. And then I scored a three quarter inch, two and a quarter and three inches. 
I'll put all the measurements in the video description for you when we're all done. Okay, so we have this piece that looks like this. And part of it is going to attach to, part of it's going to attach right inside the fold. Let me zoom in. <laughs> See how the edge is gonna go right inside, or I guess on the outside, but right to the side of the score line. Okay, so, um, and then that, the other one is just gonna go down. So we're gonna use some tear and tape on this. Here's the part where like, hopefully I'm not screwing it up <laughs> because I actually haven't done, I have done pop-up cards like this before, but just not this particular one. Um, so I am using tear and tape on both of the ends that are gonna stick to the card. Have you guys done pop-up cards like this? Where you have like a little, a little tab. Okay, so this was a long piece and um, Hopefully this is right. Okay, so we've got the two folded over like this. And now is the hard part, taking the tape off. <laughs> I trimmed my nails recently, so I don't have anything to peel with. Okay, uh, they were too long, so I'm just gonna pull those over. All right, so I've got, yep, the smaller corner is gonna go on the left side and this is the one I'm going to put just inside. In fact, we can put that down first. I'm going about an inch down from the side. I'm just going to check. Here's the square that's going to go at the top. So if I want it to go all the way up there, I can. If I want it to come down a little bit, I can do that too. Maybe I'll go up just a smidge. Okay, so just inside the fold. And then the other one is going to... Oh my gosh, I'm feeling so nervous. Like, <laughs> Am I going to get this wrong? Um, it's going to lay... Oh no, how do I, how do I want that? Okay. <sighs> I'm I'm like double checking because when it it has to fold flat, right? And when it folds flat, this part needs to be down. And when it folds flat. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to fold it like this, fold it in, and then close it. And then when it opens, it has the pop-up. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this bigger one. So you can watch me again. This piece is one by five, and I scored it at one, three, and four inches. So this one is sort of just the basic, you know, one inch little squares, okay? So we're going to do the same thing on this one, we're going to have the longer piece be toward the fold, which was what the, it's the, it's on the opposite side. So it's the same concept of the longer one being by the flap. Um, and we're gonna do the tear and tape again. <laughs> Thank you for cheering me on, Nancy. Properly placed pop-up, woohoo! <laughs> Sometimes I finish these videos and I was like, oh, I did not do a good job on that. <laughs> so, last time I think I had one that I didn't uh, uh, I didn't plan very well. And I was like, okay, next time I'm going to be ready to go. That's the best laid plans, right? <laughs> then the day goes by and it's not how I planned it to be. Okay, so the first one that we put down is the one that's closer to the long end, and that's the one where we're putting just inside the fold. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, and then we're closing this, like fold, folding, folding that, right? And then we're going to close the card, and it pops up. Okay, so the card, when it's closed, folds flat. And when you open it, 
it has these two pieces that pop up. Now those are not very exciting, but that's just the um, structure of what will hold the layered piece that has the image on it. So I've cut some pieces here. This one is uh, one and a half by one and a half layered onto one and three quarters by one and three quarters. And this one is two by two layered on two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Okay, so for this front or for the inside, I have this cute little turtle, some hearts, and oh my gosh, I just love this little bird. So I thought we'd do the bird in Coastal Cabana ink, which is the blue. So he's gonna be the turtle's friend. Isn't it just the cutest? Oh, I love it. <laughs> and then we have a turtle who is going to be in black. Um, there we go. And there's a little shell. We have a big shell for the big turtle and a little shell for the little turtle. So cute. And I think I will color in him as well. Now there are two little turtles in this stamp set and I chose the one that is facing the right side because I wanted it to be facing the inside of the card. The other one has its eyes open, which I do prefer. If I put the turtle on the top though, the bird would be on the bottom, but birds fly in the sky. So it seems weird to me to have the bird on the bottom panel. So I stuck with the, the turtle that has his um, that is facing the right direction. I'm going to add some pink in there. I love to incorporate colors several times. And so I've got, <laughs> I've got the little turtle with the hearts because he's saying you are turtly loved <laughs> to the little, um, the little bird. In hindsight, I feel like I could make my squares a little bit smaller, but um, I'm fine with them the way that they are. You could stamp more images or bigger images. Um, and always, whenever I show you cards, I always, my hope is that you'll use whatever you have at home. And it may not be this, um, set, right? You might be using a different stamp set, um, different designer paper to make this card. So I hope that my card and Kimberly's card will just be an example and that you will do your own your own thing with it. Make it your own. Use what you have at home. And then when you run out, <laughs> you can buy more stuff at my online store. I'm just kidding because you're never going to run out. You know, you know you're never going to run out. That's not, we don't buy things because we run out. We buy things because we just want something new. <laughs> I'm just being real. All right, let's see. Do we have room for you are totally loved? <laughs> I think if I go a little bit lower with it, we do have room. You are totally loved. I just love saying that. <laughs> yeah, we need some hearts up there too. All right. Hey, our card is almost done. This is so cute. And because it has turtles, this would fit for the great big card swap theme in March. So get your turtles out, get your cows out, get your pigs out, your donkeys and your otters <laughs> and all your favorite Stampin' Up! or otherwise animals. My sister just sent me a card that she made for a baby, a new baby. And oh my goodness, it was so cute. It was like little forest animals. And I was like, oh, I love it. So I want to see, I want to see all your cute animals in March for the great big card swap. In order to make sure I have adhesive in the right place, I put it on the tab where we have, <laughs> I put it on the tab where we um, want it to go so that um, it's it's positioned just right. I was just looking at your comment, Nancy. You made me smile. <laughs> hey, I'm just speaking the truth here. <laughs> okay, I needed to go. Am I hanging over the edge? Oh, 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 I'm hanging over the edge too much. Okay, hold on. Ah, tear apart. Okay, the key when you have tear and tape is to do a little twisty motion. Okay, important, very important. When you're putting on your square pieces, the, the pop-up pieces, you cannot go over this edge because that is like 
<laughs> then it won't close. That was my problem. Okay. So this edge is where you line this up and it's okay if it hangs over this edge because there's no adhesive there. And when it pops up, it'll just be hanging over. So this is the edge you need to pay attention to. So make sure you line up your pop-up piece with that, that edge. Same thing on the bottom. I just did it too fast. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right, let's close our card and open it for the full effect. Forever friends. Oh, he's so cute. You are totally loved. I love it. <laughs> Tony, the key to all of Julie's cards is to take at least one thing off and change it or move it. Okay, that one was a functionality thing. I could not close the card if I didn't move it. <laughs> I love the way this card turned out. Oh my goodness. I hope that you'll try this at home as well. Thank you so much to Kimberly Barbish for her inspiring sample with the Valentine's Day and the snail. Just the cutest and I'm happy I finally got to use my turtle set. I actually did use it for another card. So let me show you some more samples with the Turtle Friends stamp set. This is in the annual catalog. So um, I know we've got a new mini catalog that we keep talking about, but uh, there's still some fun bundles and stamp sets in the annual catalog as well. So here's a card that I made. This one was actually inspired by um, a, a sample that Stampin' Up! did for the bundle focus. And then here are a couple swaps. This first one is from Margot Richardson. Isn't that cute? I love the repetitive sentiment down the side. It almost is like a graphic um, background. And then this one is from Gwen Duckworth. Oh my goodness. So cute. Isn't he cute? I can't wait to play around a little bit more with that. My intention actually was for this to be a birthday card and I was going to use the party hat and the streamers, you know, but then, um, I don't know, it just turned into a friend card. <laughs> okay. Are you ready to make another card? I was inspired by another card that was sent in for the great big card swap. And, um, oh, let me bring in my pieces. So this, this one, I just loved the idea of it and I wanted to duplicate it. So let me, let me get myself organized here, remove my, my sneak peek so you don't see it. <laughs> okay, here's the card. It was from Debbie Thomas and I just loved the concept of having the black and white and then the sort of, um, the spotlight flower, right? Just one flower that was color. And um, I I love this stamp set. It's old. I hand penned, penned and painted is what it was called. Um, and I, I think I got it. I don't remember if I ever used it at the time, but I don't have it anymore because it's retired. And so I looked through all my stamps to try to find something that was similar. And I found this, the Friendly Hello stamp set. So this is one that you can get for free during celebration. It's the one that has the designer paper. That's part of it. I'm going to set this aside over here. Now this is going into the swap. So um, if you did a flower swap and you were in the last video showcase, you might get Debbie's card. I just used it as inspiration to make my card tonight. Um, I was going to show you in the celebration book. So friendly hello right here. So this is free with a hundred dollar order it includes the stamp set and 12 by 12 designer paper. So it's kind of a package deal. Um, but I'm sure again that you have other, you know, flowers that are like this at home that you can use. So even if you don't have the friendly hello, you could still duplicate the look of Debbie's card and hopefully uh, my card tonight will inspire you. So for my card, I've got a Calypso coral card base. I think that Debbie used pumpkin pie, but I, my go-to with flowers tends to be Calypso Coral, which is kind of a similar color, just a little more pink in there. And then I have a um, basic black piece that is probably not, nope, I guess that's the right size. Sorry. Um, it is three and three quarter inches by five. And the white piece is three and a half inches by four and three quarters. Okay, and then I just cut another white one to go on the inside. Okay, so we're going to start with, we're going to start with the greeting. And I, um, I was inspired by Debbie, but actually I'm going to do something a little different. Um, hold on, I got to get my scrap paper. Okay. 
because I'm stamping off the edges tonight. Okay, so I'm going to start with a sentiment, and Debbie did her sentiment in black, but I'm going to use the Calypso Coral. I love this, um, this graphic font that Hello Friend, oh dear, there was a little bit of, um, a little bit of inkage over here. I'm just going to try my sand eraser. This is really handy. The sand eraser, I've, I've heard people find these in the online or the dollar store. I just got mine on Amazon. Tombow sand eraser. If you look it up, you can find it. And it just helped like if you have a light ink spot. So look at that. Like it's gone. That's awesome. Essentially what it does is you're sanding down the cardstock. So it doesn't always work. You know, if you had a lot of ink, it may not it may not work as well, but it works for small, small spots. Okay, next up, I'm going to take the black ink and I'm going to stamp the flower. Now, um, Debbie's flower was just a single flower. Mine's a double flower, so I feel like I have to be a little bit strategic. I'm going to go over here and I'm definitely stamping off the edges here. I'm going to just make this pattern um, keep going. And one more. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside just for a second because while I've got this stamp out, I just gonna I'm gonna stamp on the inside piece just in the corner some flowers. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside, bring this one back in. Okay, now we're going to add some color. And, um, oops, you know what, I need to do one more. I need to stamp on a scrap piece because we're going to color and um, cut out one of the flowers. I almost forgot. Okay, so now we're gonna bring in some color. I'm using the Granny Apple Green, and this stamp set has some solid leaves, and so I'm using those two images to add the leaves. one more there okay it's coming together beautifully the last thing is to color in our extra flower and this is the one that's in the foreground so that's the one I'm going to color and cut out I'm starting with the light calypso coral and I'm going to color the whole flower Usually when I stamp with Stampin' Blends or color with Stampin' Blends, I use um, the light color first and then I add the dark detail. You can do it the other way around. And actually when I was practicing for this card, I did, I did one where I started with the dark and then I blended it with the light and I didn't like it as well. So um, I'm gonna, Go back to what I usually do. <laughs> so starting with the light and then I'm just adding um, some dark lines, really light touch here in all the places where there are already lines on the image. And that just sort of highlights those spots. And I'm going to just use the yellow marker to add a yellow center to the flower. And now we're just going to hand cut the flower to pop up on our card. I just was thinking about how I didn't use any embellishments on the last card. I guess the polka dots in that designer paper is kind of busy. I keep thinking maybe I should add ribbon or something. Do you guys use ribbon on a lot of cards? I tend not to use ribbon. I think because it's just so bulky. And it's not something that like I gravitate towards. It's usually like an afterthought and I'm like, oh, I need to put something else on there. So leave a comment and let me know. Do you, 
Do you use a lot of ribbon on your cards? And if so, do you tie bows or do you usually use the ribbon flat? Okay, there's our flower. And we're going to add it to the card with some Stampin' Dimensionals. I was trying to figure out, I wanted to, well, I'll show you my finished card. <laughs> I kind of like the finished one better, but let's glue this together. And then I'll bring in the other one and show you. This is not, it's not bad, I just didn't. I like the placement of the flowers better on my original. So this is going to go on the black layer and then we're going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of the flower. And I am using the edges. I just tear them off and put them on the there we go. You know what? I flipped it upside down. I actually like that better. I'm coming around. Uh. Isn't this pretty? Oh my gosh, I just love the way it like spotlights that flower and that color. I'm so inspired by the cards that you guys send in for the great big card swap. Tonight I featured two of them, but there's so many more that I will, you know, take pictures of or come back to later and um, and that really just stick with me. So thank you so much again to Debbie for her inspiration for this card. Let me bring in her card again and show you. It's not exactly the same and you can definitely see the differences. Like I used a color card base, um, but the idea of spotlighting one flower and having the colored leaves was definitely something that I got from Debbie's card. So Debbie, thank you so much for that inspiration. I promise I would show the other one. And so the flowers here are just a little bit differently placed. I'm not sure which one I like better, but they're nearly identical. So it's almost a moot point. Anyway, thank you, Debbie. And thank you to everybody who sends in cards to the Great Big Card Swap. It is so inspiring for me, as I know it is for all of you who watch at home. So I hope that you're inspired by Debbie's card, too, and that you might try something like this using the stamps that you have at home. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Well, I don't have a third card for you tonight. Usually I do, but I do have a sneak peek for you. Um, I'm really excited about my newest card class. So I had a couple months off because of the holidays and the new catalog launch, but I'm excited to get back into my monthly card classes. And in February, I'll be featuring the Daffodil Daydream stamp set. This has coordinating designer paper. And in the card kit, you'll get a six by six piece of each pattern from, I think I'm missing a pattern, um, each pattern from the... Um, daffodil afternoon designer paper so if you would like to reserve a card kit this is what it will look like and there will be one card packet for each design there's five different designs you'll have pre-punched pieces and ribbon where necessary but all of the detailed pieces like this card you'll need to die cut on your own. So you'll want to have the Daffodil Daydream um, stamp set. You'll also cut your own designer paper and you'll follow along in the YouTube class that I'll have on Friday, February 25th at 7 p.m. Central Time. No worries if you can't watch live, you can always watch the replay. And this card class will be available to everybody. So if you have the Daffodil Daydream um, at home, you can follow along with me during the card class. Um, if you don't wanna purchase the card kit, I will have a PDF option, which will have the um, instructions and photos and all of the measurements so that you can make these cards at home. If you'd like to reserve a kit, you can go to tinyurl.com slash feb2022 S-O-T-M, which stands for Stamp of the Month. 
I'm so excited to be doing another card class with all of you. Um, in the last video that I did, which was the great big card swap on Tuesday, I shared a sneak peek of a card. And so I will share another sneak peek today, a different one. Here is one of the cards that we'll be making. I absolutely love the way this card turned out with the detailed die cuts. You can see we've got a little vellum doily in there, which will also be included in your kit, as well as the die cut scallop rectangle. Isn't that just the sweetest? Now the Daffodil Daydream stamp set does have two spring sentiments in it, Happy Mother's Day and Easter blastings. And so all of the cards that I made use those two sentiments. However, if I were making these cards at home, if I were you, I would substitute other sentiments because I think these card designs are gonna be so perfect for other occasions, like a just because, thinking of you, get well soon, happy birthday, any kind of occasion at all that you will need a spring card for. So I hope you'll consider participating in the Daffodil daydream um, card class whether you're just watching live with me or if you get a card kit to make these at home uh, now if you've already signed up I'll be sending out the invoices in the next um, few days so um, stay tuned and watch for that um, and if you do add on the stamp set and the bundle or just the stamp set, if you add on the stamp set, you'll get a discount on the stamp set. If you add the stamp set and the bundle, you'll get a discount plus a free gift and you'll be able to choose a celebration gift. So like a double, 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 <laughs> triple win, triple whammy. That's so exciting. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. We made two cards. Plus I shared a whole bunch of other ideas with the mail call. <laughs> Thank you again for all your inspiration. Thank you for tuning in with me tonight. If you haven't, make sure to get all of your celebration favorites like the Friendly Hello stamp set and designer paper and the sunshine and rainbow paper. You can get that in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop with a qualifying order. Make sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Help me hit that 20,000 goal and hit follow and like on Facebook so you don't miss out on fun posts. Have a great weekend and I look forward to stamping with you soon. Bye.